for joining me. So today we're going to be tying a version of the Eastgate Gold, which is a wee salmon fly that originated in the River Eastgate over in County Sligo. It's one I've done quite well with over the last few years. I've only really been using it sort of four seasons now. Never had really heard of it much until I was asked to tie it for an order. Kind of like the look of it, so gave it a bash. I wouldn't really say there's been a season gone by that I haven't lifted a few fish off it. So, the hook I have in the vise is a size 10 Partridge Patriot and black nickel. And the thread I'm going to be using is Unithread 80 in red. I'm just going to catch on around the midway point and work my way down towards where the hooks start to splay. Shrimp flies, because I've got a metal hackle on them, I like to start around the centre and it gives me a good marker point for where I want my center haggle. So for the tag for this fly I'm going to be using French oval and small gold. Catch on a length of that. Just a few turns to secure it. And then kind of for size tens, I like about four turns. I would maybe step up an extra turn for an eight. A fewer turn turn less for, for a 12 and catch that in, secure it down and trim off her waist. Just work my way back down to the tag. Now for the tail we're going to be using some golden pheasant breast feathers. The capes for these have been increasingly hard to get now over the last probably couple of years but I've picked sort of these up recently. They come strong, it's about a meter length I get them from Sebastian over at Ban Valley Flies. Quite good value and there's a real good mix of feathers. Probably 10s and 12s would be the main one. But there's a few bigger and a few smaller as well. And I suppose if you can't really get the capes, that's kind of what we have to work with. So just separate the tip for that. Again, you have your natural curve of the feather. wants to be pointing down. So we'll separate our tip. Just get that, try and get that into the camera. Trim it off, and then we'll bind that down. Half a dozen turns or so. Catch the stock in with my haggle pliers. Sometimes I like to do it with my fingers, but if it's a bit fiddly and you haven't got much to work with, haggle pliers just give you a bit of extra scope. So there's two turns. Few of them fibers wanting to come forward, but we'll just try and tease them back. There's a feather just doesn't want to do what I want it. So three turns. And we'll catch that in and lock it in. A few turns just to secure it down. Trim off her waist. So that's not really very tidy looking, I'm just going to take my double needle and see if I can strain it out. There's a few fibres caught in behind the hook, so we'll just peel them back. And this wee boy at the front that's going forward. A few turns of thread should help convince him to stay back a bit. There we go. Not too bad. I'm going to add a little bit of flash into this fly. So, some crystal flash, UV pearl. Just a strand either side. Lengthwise probably slightly longer than the actual tail. At least if you go longer and you want you can trim it, trim it back to the length of the tail. So a strand on either side. Some boys aren't really fussed on flashing salmon flies, but I think a little bit's okay, maybe not too much. And trim that off. So our rib is going to be again same as our butt, the gold oval and I'll catch it in there we go, just secure it well down That's us. and then for the body the original pattern had gold mylar but a lot of my salmon flies I like to use, use dubbin so I have some gold light bright here I'm just going to dub on 
a very thin rope. Synthetic materials is really good for dubbing. It takes it takes a good bite to the fly or to the to the thread, sorry. A lot better, a lot easier to use in seals for. So there's our tight dubbing rope. And just covering all our thread. That's us. And then we'll bring a rib up through. Open turns. And catch it down. Now, for our centre haggle, we're going to be using some orange cock. There's an orange cock cape. And we'll just pull a feather out. And sort of check it for for size, kind of want the fibres going back past the point of the hook, maybe even nearly into the bend. So strip off our flue, catch it in our haggle pliers and double over. Just separating our tip for tying in. That's not too bad, kind of need to get into the way of watching what I'm doing in the camera. So it's you as boys can see it. Trim off her tip. And tie it in. So, talking maybe three turns. Touching turns, stroking all our fibres back. Trying to keep it as neat as possible. And we'll go one more. Secure our hackle down. Trim off our waist. And that's not too bad. We'll just lay a base of thread up our shank and back down. I think at this point I'll catch my rib in for the front, which again, same as the rest of the fly, gold oval. Now, if you want your haggles to lie further back, you can always add another turn or two of thread to force them back. I'm reasonably happy with that. Now, I don't, I don't mind the haggles and salmon flies being being quite bushy. It helps create a bit of buzz in the water. So, front of the haggle again, our gold light bright. Just take a pinch of that. Dub it on down the thread a bit so we don't catch any haggle fibres in. And tight turns, we're coming up a couple of miles short of the eye. And then we bring a rib up. You won't really get too many turns of rib, two, three, probably would be more than ample. Catch it off. Tie it down and cut it off. There's a wee strand of gold pointing forward. We'll bring it back. In fact, I'll maybe even just trim it off. There we go. Now, I'm going to add some jungle cock in here. Sort of, I'm going to put it in before my last haggle. I have two feathers picked out here. What I'll do is lay them one on top of the other. Peel back the flue, just all the fluff that you don't want. That will just separate and open up the tips. So, just one on top of the other, and set them on to try not to move the hook much. Just until they're going past the splay of the hook. Three turns to hold them down, and then I'll take the points. Twist them out. This kind of helps that your two feathers are similar length. Nothing worse than finishing a fly, spending a bit of time on it, and then when you have it varnished and you're looking at it, you're realizing that one jungle cook feather is longer than the other. Not that it makes a big pile of difference fishing, I wouldn't think, but when you spend the time on it, you want to have it 
nice. So just a few more turns behind and in front. And we'll trim that off. And then for our final haggle, I've picked out it's a dyed red badger haggle. I think the original calls just for a dyed red haggle. But again, I was given this fly to tie as an order. And the fly I was given at the time was using the badger haggle and I've kind of used it ever since. Last year now I picked up picked up a decent fish on it towards the end of the season. It was a dark fish, you know, but probably around nine pounder that. If I can find a picture I'll maybe get it included just at the end of this this video for you. As soon as before, find the tip, catch it in, and three or four turns just depending on what you fancy yourself. I like those sort of dyed badger saddles, they're, they're nice and soft, they're not quite as soft as a hem, but they're, they're easy to work with, stems are very fine, they keep the bulk down, which I suppose when you're starting off time flies is, is probably one of the, the biggest obstacles you have, especially towards the head. Right, and we'll just tidy down there so we bit there, or can I pick that off? No, nope. we'll get it with my scissors, it's just a half or a stump of a, there we go, stump of a hackle fibre. So that's not too bad, I'm just going to whip finish off here. And there's probably no reason you couldn't varnish that and fish with it. The original, I think, finished off with a black thread. I like, I like using the red, I use red in quite a lot of flies. I also like to finish off the heads sometimes with a glow bright floss, that's a, a number four, which is, I suppose it's like a fluorescent red. We'll catch it on a few turns just to secure it to stop it slipping, trim off her waist, and then the floss, the floss can be a little bulky, I haven't really found a, a thread yet that, that gives me that colour I'm happy with. so. Just catch it on enough that it'll hold itself and basically go straight into a whip finish to cover all your thread. That's me there. Whip finish. And trim off. Just get a wee touch of varnish on that. It'll take maybe three or four coats to bring that to a nice glossy head just to kind of soaks into the, the floss. But worth put plenty on the first time because it will soak soak well in. Just turn the vice upside down to get the underside of it. There we go. Just to keep it on my side there. So there we have my version of the Ski Gold. Great fly for end of the season. I would I would rate that probably as highly as a, a Calvin shrimp, which I suppose is quite a bold statement. I would be a big fan of the Calvins and I know going by the amount of tie and orders quite a lot of people are, but certainly I'd quite happily fish that either along with or instead of. Right, so hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.